Okay, so let's walk through a tax return preparation together. Let's say we collected all the documents from the client, um, from the list I, uh, we have before. So the main first are three things that you should ask are the last year tax return, current year balance sheet, and current year profit and loss. Um, the rest we can ask after we receive this too. Because sometimes they don't run payroll, so you don't have to ask for W-2. Sometimes they didn't pay for this, uh, those uh, state payments. They don't have sales um, taxes. So uh, we first, before we you know, send emails to clients asking for things that they don't even know they have, uh, we should look into their books and then we will ask the other ones. Okay, so first we look at the last year tax return with the current year balance sheet on their books. So this is the last year tax return 2018. Uh, this is their um, their profit and loss, which we don't care so much about um, in this portion. We will go all the way to see the Schedule L. Schedule L will have the balance sheet numbers. And that's what we want to compare with the current balance sheet tax return. So in order to uh, start any escort tax return that has a balance sheet, you should look at the retained earnings uh, from the last year tax return line 24 is 25,000. This number must match our beginning number on our tax return for our books for 2019. In this case it is 49,000. So it doesn't match. We have to fix this before we get into any other uh, before entering any other numbers. Okay, so based on our steps, we have to look at the fixed the invent name term, sorry, fixed assets, see if they recorded a depreciation and the distribution, see if they recorded distributions for that year. And that will making those adjustments will get us our retained earnings to match last year's tax tax retained earnings number. So let's do the equipment first. Okay, so here in equipment, in our books, we have 20,000 and there's not a, a section for accumulated depreciation. So it's easy to see that they missed to record the depreciation from 2018 because we don't see it here. And you see this item here um, on their taxes for last year minus their accumulated depreciation. Um, sometimes this number has accumulated depreciation from previous years. So we don't want to see record this number in here. We, what we want to see is look for the depreciation amount for 2018 for that year. So the depreciation amount is on first page of the 1120S line 14. It shows here $4,000. That's what they took out as depreciation of 2018. So that's what we will add here. We'll just record your general entry here it's easy to do you just do this we'll change the date to so this is the work that should have been done by the accountant who prepared this tax return on their books um because it's a 2018 tax um, a 2018 entry so 2018 we have depreciation expense for four thousand and accumulated depreciation 4,000 as a credit. Uh, our description, we should always have a description just so when we come back, we know what we wrote this journal entry for. To record depreciation for 2018. Save and close. And now we run last year cash from report okay so now we see that we have the accumulated depreciation 24 gives us 16 now our retained earnings is 46,000 let's see if that did it sometimes when recording this we'll do it no it seems like very close though so um let's move on to our next entry or our next step okay so our next step will be 
to check out distributions. So every year, the distribution that comes out should be closed out with retained earnings. And we have to do this at the beginning of the following year. So in this case, we have, or our book says that we had taken 30,000 on distribution, 15,000 for officer or shareholder one, and shareholder two, it's another 15,000. There are 50-50 ownership. And let's see if that's true. When we actually go in here, let me make this big. It shows that for 2019, if we run the report for the beginning and the end of the year, we have only one distribution per shareholder of $5,000. So this is the number that it should be on the on our balance sheet, not the 15,000. 15,000 is including the that distribution that was taken for the, from the previous years, that this number should have been included in our current year retained earnings. So let's close this out. How do we do this? If we do a general entry. Our date will be the beginning of this year, 1119. Um, enter your number, our general entry. I always enter CPA in either one, two, three, just so I, when I go back, I know what number or that it was me who did this journal entry. So we will do distribution, distribution one, and then we, so distributions are debit accounts. So we want to credit it to take the beginning balance out because it was a negative number. So retain earnings. We'll close it out with retain earnings. The total of each will be twenty thousand. And then our description we should have to close out distributions. Save and close. Now, as you see, each of them have zero as the beginning balance, and 5,000 is what reflects as a uh, total distribution for that year. Now we go back to reports, and again, we see this here. This is the real distribution that we took out for this year. And now we hope, since we close it out with retained earnings, we hope that this is the same as what's on the tax return, which it is. So in 2018, the ending retained earnings that's reflected on our tax return is the same as beginning balance on, a, on our books for 2019. So once these two numbers tie, now we get to enter the, the other numbers on the balance sheet first, and then we'll move on to our profit and loss. Let me show you how. Now we enter the other numbers in our tax returns. So we're done with that last year tax return for now. Minimize it and here's our tax software. I use Pro Series to get this, uh, to do my tax returns. So information worksheet, it's basic. You enter all the information that you need. We're not gonna go over any of this because we want to get into the numbers. Um, now let's fill out the balance sheet first. So our numbers on the balance sheet will be, so cash one, three, four, six, which is our business bank accounts for 2019. Again, this balance sheet is run for as of December 31st, 2019. Our equipment. Now we know we need to make an adjustment here because we'll probably have a, a depreciation for this year. Um, so we'll look at the depreciation schedule in a bit. Actually, let's look at it right now. So once you transfer your asset, the, the tax return will calculate your depreciation for the current year. So if you look at your form 11120S, you will see the depreciation right here. So the depreciation for this year is 6400 so now 6400 plus $4,000 from the previous years, we have a $10,400 a number that should be here. We 
We can also see this number from our depreciation schedule. So our depreciation prior year is 4,000 and our current tax, our current depreciation is 6,000. So that gives us 10,000 and our cost is 20,000. So we also want to match this number to us on our balance sheet schedule L um, four. Okay, so we know here we need to make a journal entry. Let's make it right now. So journal entry here. We'll do it for the end. 2019 appreciation. It's a debit account. Well, it was 64. And it goes against accumulated depreciation 64. Description to record tax depreciation. Save and close. And here is our updated balance sheet. Okay, so now our total assets are 133060, same as here. So we're good for now. Now we go to our liabilities and equity. We have a credit card. You can go into details here, but let's just uh, enter our amount for liabilities on credit cards and our distributions are ten thousand dollars distributions now on the distributions you got to be careful you have to know how much each um, members have as far as percentage uh, it's because you okay we'll just enter here ten thousand dollars here we know that each because I know this client, they each have 50% distribution. So they must, if they take, they decide to take a total of $10,000, they have to allocate 50 and 50% 50 per shareholder. So if this shareholder number two own 70% and this one 30, then here I will want to see 7,000 and here's 3,000 totaling 10,000. Or if they decide to take 20,000, 30,000, it will have to be time their percentage. Um, keep that in mind because that's very important to do. So we keep our S selection um, without any problems. Okay, so we enter our distribution. Now, retain earnings, we know it's that. You're gonna have to enter this. This will populate after we enter our profit and loss. So items so here that's it that's it as far as the balance sheet now we'll go to page one to enter our numbers and we'll run the profit and loss as well now let's run the report for a profit and loss it, our job is much better easier if we have accountant access to our clients books so we can see what's on every account and it will help you doing the general interest for depreciation and distribution and um it will be more, more helpful for you and your client rather than have him send you the item or send you the profit and loss send you the breakdowns and then you having to send them general entries and stuff um, just saying this you should put for your client to do that for you anyways so here our total income is 83,460 we enter that on our number our page 1 of the 1120s line 1 83,460 here is they're divided by business and services um, this number again like I mentioned before we should match it with the sales tax which we do have that the client sent us. Let's see, yearly sales tax return. So when they file their the sales tax return, they enter the same number because it was for the whole year, 83,460. It ties to our books and it ties to our tax return. So we're all happy there. Uh, now we have our depreciation expense that should come 
directly in our tax return so we don't have to enter it we have our payroll tax that will go here payroll tax of 7952 tax and licensing this is where we question our client we ask him if any of this was part uh for the corporate tax state tax return so we just click on this and it will give us a breakdown here as we as we thought the french tax board eight hundred dollars payment was included so we gotta make sure that on the tax return we include it on the irs but we take it out or we add it back on our uh state return so here i know we have space for taxes so a state franchise or income taxes here is where it goes 800 and we'll take the licensing to 255 so we still have this amount but it's broken down in different places so when this is transferred to the state this this software automatically adds it back to the return okay i'll show you this in a minute when we go to the state and now we have wages and salaries again they summed up all the wages and salaries for their employees and officers so we got to make sure we either ask for the breakdown or if you have accountants access you just click on it and you see the breakdown here is nice and clean officer is 62 and employees is 31 so we will start by entering the employees this is up here so wages and salary for the employees goes here thirty one thousand, and then for the officer we'll have a little worksheet oh, it's before this is a full-time officer he owns a hundred percent no fifty percent uh, and he makes 62 balance sheet we have two shareholders um, but we only have one officer that's actually working 100% but he only owns 50% of the business the other shareholder doesn't work so we don't run payroll for that officer just one one of them which is legit it's good uh, but the most important part here is to have the officer compensation on one line and the wages for the employees in another line so now we go back to the report now we're showing 93,000 which is those two numbers and the next one is just another expense of water which you can enter here uh, utilities one, two, three. okay so now our our profit and loss are for our tax return in this case is the same as was on the books sometimes it's different because we have meals and entertainment that for our books it ha it's 100 percent, but for the tax return it's only 50 um and um this the software as long as you enter the entire amount the software will give you give you only 50 percent now there's another one schedule m1 wants to to reconcile your books with your tax in this case like like i said is the same so we just have to enter the same number uh, which gives us oops negative gives us zero and then take a look at schedule m2 um, this is our beginning balance of our return earnings um, and our distributions our ending balance 9767 should match most of the time matches to what's on our balance sheet on our ending retainers it doesn't necessarily have to match it's not a must but typically it does because we're doing simple as corporations um, so we're keeping track of the books and the distribution should match to this number but again it shouldn't or it doesn't have to uh, if they are taking special deductions 
or too much deductions, then uh, sometimes it, they don't match. But in this case, they do. So uh, that's basically it. That's basically it on our tax return. Our numbers ties. So we have a zero there. And no, no red, meaning that all our numbers are balance sheet 133. 133 are the same. And our profit and loss on our page one, we have the same loss of 25,000 as our under books. And our numbers tied to our wages, sales tax return, and our state tax return. Oh, yes. So our those $800. So if we go to the state part, uh, California, transfer, okay. We look at form one we should have see, we should see the eight hundred dollars add back to our so this is the same numbers what the irs have uh, uh but here we're adding back the eight hundred dollars that we took as a deduction in here so now our loss is less because we added back an expense and that should be the only difference and that's why we want to make sure we have it separate and that's it and that's it for our tax return.